Good morning. <laughs> uh, make sure I got everything. Good morning, guys. Oh, come on. Let's have a big good morning. Good morning. Good morning online. Good morning in person. Man, I'm so glad you're here. Man, I'm loving this series. I don't know about you, but it's speaking to me once again about the importance of what we think. Anybody else have trouble with what you think? I don't know about you, but man, I, I struggle with that so often with, with what I think. And um, uh, this series is, has brought back to mind a lot of things that, that I've gone through in order to change my thinking. And uh, the stinking thinking. Anybody know what stinking thinking is? Man, I've had stinking thinking for, well, as old as I am. And uh, it's a battle that we all face and I want to give you some tools today. We're going to go over what we went over some last week in a different way. But I want to give you some tools this morning of how to change the way you're thinking and win the war that's in our, in our mind. And God gives us that promise. And I, and I want to read that this morning in, in Romans chapter. Before I do, I just got to stop and say something. Wasn't Dwayne awesome? Man, Dwayne, you rock, buddy. That was awesome. 16, right? 16? Just turned 16 not long ago. Last year? Yeah, a little bit while ago. <laughs> so proud of him. Man, I, we, we love our youth here and just so proud of him and, and uh, just, just his commitment. You, you got to know this guy is so committed to drums. He plays in the fife and drum at Colonial Williamsburg and really rocks it out there and comes to church and rocks it out here. And we're just so, so thankful for, uh, for you, Dwayne, for all our musicians. Don't, aren't we blessed, man? All our musicians, all our tech people. All our singers, we're just, we're just really blessed. And uh, you know, most of our band's been together for uh, uh, quite a few years, <laughs> quite a while. And, and we've been so blessed over the years with them. And it's so cool. To, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I've been here kind of for a little while. So it's awesome. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2, man, it kind of lays it out for us what we're trying to do in this series. And it's this. It says, it says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And here's what that looks like. Don't think like the world thinks. Don't act like the world acts. Don't behave like the world behaves. Don't conform to the pattern of this world. What if he left it right there? I don't know about you, but that would be really heavy, wouldn't it? That would be overwhelming. But he goes further, and Paul says, but be transformed. Oh, there's hope. There's hope that I don't have to stay in this mind of mine. Be transformed. Be renewed. Be changed. And how are we transformed? You say it with me. By the renewing of of my mind by the renewing of our minds you know god gives us the strength to to change the way we think about things anybody ever make any dumb irrational decisions maybe have you made any this morning maybe maybe <laughs> you know you know Craig Groeschel, you know, who wrote the book, he wrote this book, the Winning the War in Your Mind. He, he gives a couple of illustrations, this, and, and, and they're so good, and one of them really spoke to me. I mean, it was like, man, that's me. That is me. So I just want to read it to you this morning. I got a couple from him, and, and I just want to read them. And, and it says, uh, you know, you know he, he said that his wife, Amy, asked him a question on the weekend and said, what, what do you like to do today on Sunday? And he said, well, I want to do two things. I want to go to church. Makes sense. He's a pastor. But he wants to go to church to one of the services that he wasn't preaching in. They're a big church, and they got several services people preach. And he says, let's go to church like regular people. And I want to go for a walk. So there was two things, right? I want to go to church, and I want to go for a walk. And so she says, hey, that's great. Let's do that. 
And so uh, he's like us. He's got a lot of kids, and he's got a lot of grandkids. And so his wife wanted to go see one of the grandbabies. Uh, so that morning she gets up, and she goes sees one of the grandbabies. And then she gets back about 15 minutes before the service starts. And listen, listen to what he says. So he says, 15 minutes before church, she comes back in, and our house is only 10 minutes away from church. And she said, let's get ready to go to the church. And for some stupid reason, maybe you can relate, he says, I decided that it was too late to go to church. And she said, no, let's go. You know, she said, if we leave right now, we'll still be five minutes early. But he dug his feet in. He doubled down on his stupidity. That's his words. And he said, no, it's too late to go to church. And for a few minutes, we argued until we still could have left and been on time. But he drug the argument out for a full 20 minutes until he was finally right that it was too late to go to church. Have you ever doubled down on something like this? I mean, I can remember some arguments that we've had, and, and, and you just know in your mind, you know, maybe she says something, and, and she shows you the error of your ways, and in spite of knowing that you are in the wrong, you just continue to hold to it strongly. And no matter what, you're not going to let it go. And you fight over something that's so stupid. Are you with me? Anybody? Anybody? Is it just me that's done this? Come on. Is it just me? Let me see hands. Anybody? Come on. We've all done it, haven't we? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why would we double down on something that we know, man, maybe it's a friendship. you got a friendship and you double down knowing that you're wrong, but you keep doing it. Well, he tells this story, and man, it just made me laugh about this one. He, 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 you know, I, I was a mechanic and I worked at a Buick dealership. And he says that his first car was a 1979 Buick Century but it wasn't just the Buick Century, it was the Turbo Coupe. And you know, let me tell you about the Turbo Coupe. The Turbo Coupe was one of those vehicles that probably only lasted a year. You know how many they sold? I looked that up today. They sold 1,653, I think, Buick Century Turbo Coupes. So if you got one right now, it is pretty valuable because they only made, you know, less than 2,000 of them. So, so you, <laughs> he got this car, and if you see the picture of it, back in 1979, it wasn't a cool car. I mean, it was less than cool. And so he says one of the things that he did was he, he said what he could change about it was the stereo system. Any, anybody ever install a stereo system in your car? Man, that was one of the first things. When you got a new car, you wanted a good stereo so you could crank it up and beat down the street, you know, and just rock into the, you know, to the 70s music, which is the greatest music of all time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm dating myself, I know. But you would put this stereo system, and he says, you know, he went out and he found a stereo system and he sank all his money into this, this used Alpine stereo system. And if you know anything about back in the day, Alpine was the top of the line, buddy. You wanted that. And so he bought a used one and, and he couldn't pay for installation, so he figured he would hook it up himself. Now, let me tell you, when you hook up a radio in a car, there is some gaggle of wires to hook up. I mean, there's all these speaker wires. There's all these. I mean, it is just a mess. And he said that he started on it and he worked on it all day long. And then finally, he had to even turn the lights on on the car and he got it hooked up. And by some miracle, it played. He said he got up the next morning and he was excited to drive to school in his 1979 Turbo Coupe Buick Century rocking out, you know. And he went to turn the radio on and it wouldn't work. And he drove all the way to school 
He comes out at night. He, he drives home, and the radio, by some miracle, starts working. He doesn't know why. He gets up the next morning, he drives to school, and it's not working. He comes out that night, gets in, you know know what's wrong, right? He gets in the car, and it's working. He hooked, he crossed the wires, didn't he? He hooked the wires to his headlights. And so he said, he said for the rest of the time he owned the car, he drove around with his headlights on so he could rock away with the music. I thought that was awesome. That was class. But isn't that the truth, man? Our wires are crossed. Man, we don't think straight. And we need we need to renew our mind, like the Bible says. We've got to renew our mind. Why is it that we behave so irrationally? Well, it's because of that. Our wires are crossed. And we need a way to reprogram our mind. And God gives us that, that clue. You, you know, we set our patterns from a, a little baby. Think about this. If you have a little baby and, and you go into the room and they smile at you and you smile back and go, goo, goo, ga, ga. You know, they go, oh, they like it when I smile. So the baby smiles. Or, or maybe they get a little bit older and, 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 and you, you know, maybe they touch the stove and they go, oh, hot stove, not good, bad. They, you know, it's programming in their mind. Or maybe, uh, you know, another pathway is created when, when the baby wants a sucker and mom says, no, you can't have a sucker. So the baby cries and mom gives her the sucker. And the baby goes, oh, if I cry, I get the sucker. And that's why moms and dads oftentimes become the sucker. (laughs) When we think of thought, when we think one thought, it creates a pathway and it makes it easier for that thought to run that line to drive down that road, to drive that rut that's in our brain. And and it becomes easier and easier. And if it's the right thoughts, that's great. But man, if it's the wrong thoughts, man, we spend a lifetime trying to overcome those negative, terrible thoughts that we have. And, you know, we said last week that your life is always, always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So what is it that you think about the most? What is it that brings it up? And, and, and uh, you know, if you're trying to have a positive life, you cannot have a positive life if you got a negative mind. Because our mind directs our path. When our wires are crossed, when, we, when we're not controlling what we think, that doesn't mean that you can't stop. You, you know, we get thoughts thrown into our minds all the time. But it's what we do with those thoughts that matters. It's stopping them. It's having some way to grab a hold of them. Look what Paul says. You know, Paul, Paul is a guy, man. He went through this. You, you see in Romans chapter 7 where he's struggling with, you know, man, the things I want to do, I can't do. The things I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. And, and he's just struggling just like all of us. And then you see in Philippians chapter 4, later in his life, he says, And now, brothers and sisters, one final thing. Here's something really important for you to get. In other words, he's saying, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent And worthy of praise. Man. Have you ever thought about training your mind? We think about training our bodies. Anybody ever think about training your bodies? I've thought about it. You know, I used to think before 40. 40 is when when the wheels came off of my, my body after all the abuse. 
And, and uh, but you know, before 40, I always thought, man, I just need to run further. I just need to, you know, do more exercise. And it was all about exercise, right? And it, you just do a little bit more. Just keep exercising. I've gained a few pounds, you know. Just go run. Go just walk. Just do what you can, you know. And that's important, isn't it? It is. But, you know, after 40, you, you, you go, it doesn't matter if you can do all the exercise you want if you don't change something else, if you don't change the way you eat, right? You remember the old adage with computers, garbage in, garbage out? Well, with eating, garbage in kind of stays in and grows. You know, I've learned, I've learned about that. Several years ago after my heart attack, you know, I started a diet. No, I'm sorry. I started a lifestyle. It's not a diet. Die with a T. You know, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. And I lost 80 pounds. And uh, over time, I got away from it. And guess what? I gained 60 of it back. But since January, changing my lifestyle once again, this morning, I'm down 30 pounds from January, okay? So I'm saying that, not for your applause. Thank you. I need the support, please. But here, here's why I'm telling you this. Your health isn't all about exercise. Is exercise good? Absolutely. Is it vital for us? Absolutely. But guess what? What we put into our bodies is just as important and can help us. And it's the same way with our mind. You know, we can train our bodies if we put good fuel in it. We can train our mind if we put good thoughts in it. And where do the good thoughts come? God gives it to us. God tells us right there, man, fix your thoughts on these things. On God's Word, His Word is so good for us. It's so, you know... You never go wrong with putting more of God's words in your life. You know, another translation, the New King James translation, it says this. It says, uh, it's the same verse. It says, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, read this with me. Meditate on these things. So how do we train our mind? We begin meditating on things. Uh, you know, Meditation isn't, you know, the Eastern view of meditation is that you empty your mind. I don't need to do any more emptying, you know. God's type of meditation is not emptying your mind, but it's focusing. It's filling it with something. It's bringing it back. Meditation is this. Here's the, the definition. Um, yeah, the definition, it's to engage in mental exercise to focus one's thought. So it's to take a, a Bible verse like this Bible verse. You know what would be cool? It's to write this Bible verse down and to, and to write it down enough that you've got it memorized and to know it. You know, some of you can memorize statistics like crazy. You know why? Because you're interested and you're focused on it. It's the same way with God's Word. I'm too old. No, you're not. You're not too old. You just keep reading it and reading it and thinking on it. Sit down and really think about what he's saying there. Focus your mind on these things. Look what David said about meditation. He said, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. Psalm 143 says this, I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. You, you know, going to the beach. Anybody like to go to the beach? Man, I love the beach. I love going to the beach. And you know one of my favorite things is just to sit and watch the waves. Well, another thing is to hold a fishing rod while I'm doing that. And that's usually about all I do is, is hold the rod and watch the waves. But, but that, that, you know, just, and you know what I'm thinking about? God, you are so big. 
God, I'm so small. I'm like one of these grains of sand in your eyes. And yet, God, in your greatness and vastness, God, you, you consider me. Man, I'm your child. Wow, God. You see, that's meditating. That's meditating, focusing our thoughts on him. It's not spooky. It's taking a passage of Scripture and really focusing on it and, and getting serious about it and applying it to our life. Anybody know the Karate Kid? You know, Ralph Macchiago and, well, I didn't say that right. You know what I'm saying. Mr. Miyagi. There we go. Mr. Miyagi. Wax on, wax off. Well, you know, they came out with a remake with Jackie Chan, right? And Jackie Chan said this. He said, from the Karate Kid, he said, your focus needs more focus. Isn't that a, well, I mean, we're all there, right? My focus needs more focus. Your focus needs more focus. We need to really think about what we're thinking about. What is it you're thinking about this morning? Maybe you're like me, and for 10, 20, 30, 40, I'm going to stop there. Years, you've been thinking these negative, self-destroying thoughts. Man, I go back and I think about before, just a few years ago, I was a pastor, and I had all these, you, you, you know, I, I don't know if you realize this, but I'm, I, I was not a very confident person. I was scared to death. I was scared to death of what people would think. I was scared to death that I wouldn't measure up. You know, that my self-worth, my man, you talk about self-worth, I had the self-worth of a worm. And it, and it affected not just me, but it affected people around me. And so through counseling, you know, I'm a big fan of counseling. You guys know that. Through counseling, through focused meditation, what we're going to talk about in a minute, about really getting in and, and retraining my mind. Do I still struggle? Absolutely. You know, on a Sunday morning, I wake up and there's butterflies. I've been doing this 25 years. And there's butterflies. And I've learned, okay, God, I can't. I can't do this, God. But I'm so glad you can. And I want you to do it through me. Use me, God, in my weakness. You use me. So what is it in your mind that when I say, you know, we talked about the stronghold last, uh, last week. And I asked you this question. What stronghold is holding you back? Did you really put a name on it this, this week? Have you really thought about what is it that I keep replaying in my mind over and over again? Maybe there's some event or some trauma that took place and you say, I'm a victim or I'm, I'm struggling here. And it's kept you down. You don't have to keep those thoughts there. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people, to all of us. Bad things happen, but God is able to bring what? Good out of the bad. Even though it may be a bad, horrible thing, you don't have to live in that the rest of your life. And that's what God is telling us here, to break those strongholds in our life. So often those strongholds are tied to a lie. It's a lie. And maybe, maybe you're here and, and maybe you grew up in a family and they struggled with finances, Struggle with debt, and so you had this thought that, man, I'll never be good with money. I'll never be able to, to, to get this under control. Or maybe you've struggled with addiction. 
You don't have a heart for folks that struggle with addiction. And you're just like, man, I'll never be able to overcome this addiction. And you just keep telling yourself that lie. Or you think, man, I'll never be healthy. You know, my family, they weren't healthy, so how am I ever going to, you know, what's, you know, is there any hope? Or maybe you've tried to get close to God, and maybe you've been close to God for about five seconds or so. And you just say, I just can't do it. Or maybe it has to do with a job. I can't find a job that really fits. I just can't find that place that really suits me. I'm just worthless. Or maybe you want to be married. Or maybe you are married. And you've got negative thoughts about that. What is that dominant stronghold in your, that's got your wires crossed? Where the devil has trained us. Are you listening? Where he's trained us to stay in that place. And where God wants to deliver us from it. God's truth demolishes the strongholds. His truth demolishes the strongholds. You see, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. This is so cool, guys. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that he gives us to what? To live the Christian life. To be able to break those strongholds in our mind. Is it easy? No, it is not easy. It is just like forgiveness. Anybody ever tried to forgive somebody? Come on, anybody? Have you tried to forgive? Is it easy? No. You know why? Because we've cut a rut in our brain. That's why it's so difficult to get it out of that rut. Because every time we see that person, every time something happens, we're re-triggered again, and we go back to, man, they hurt me so bad. And we, you know what we have to do? But right now, God, because you forgave me, I choose See, it's a choice. I choose to forgive this person. And you keep doing that. And you give it to God. And over time, what happens? You create a new pathway. And you, you forgive. It doesn't mean that the thoughts don't come back. You just do it once again. You just keep doing it. And you know what happens? You, you cut that tie that they've got. When we don't forgive, it's not for them. Man, it's for you. Because you cut that trauma or whatever hurt that is and you leave it behind you. So God's truth is what really delivers us and that's what changed me. So I've got something for you to think about this morning. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about that stronghold and then I want you to write down God's truth that goes to break that stronghold. I want you to write it down. I want you to think about it. I want you to confess it. And then I want you to believe it. So what are we going to do? We're going to write it. We're going to think it. We're going to confess it. And we're going to believe it. And we're going to keep doing that until it becomes a part of us. Until we retrain our brain. Until we uncross the wires there that we have created. We're creating new neural pathways you didn't know i could say that did you i didn't either i'm gonna give you several examples maybe you're struggling to know god's will for your life anybody ever struggle with that well here's a statement that you write down my life belongs to god Daily I seek him and daily he directs my steps. I know his voice and he leads me to his perfect will through Jesus Christ, our Savior. You're going to write it, think it, say it, confess it, saying it, and believe it over and over again. Daily I seek him. Daily he directs. You know, you just go through that. You say, well, this is kind of weird. No, it's meditation. And it, I promise you, it changes you. This is what I did. There's a book, another great book. I encourage people to get it. This is a, this is a heavy-duty discipleship type book. And it's called Victory Over the Darkness. 
And if you've ever struggled like I have with, with depression, anxiety, panic, it, anything, but why? Self-esteem issues, self-worth issues. See, it all goes back to our identity in Jesus Christ that we move when we, when we believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose again, and we want to follow him with our life. See, we're adopted in God's family, and he changes our identity. And we're part of his family, and he gives us a new identity. And see, there's a list in here. I think it's in chapter 1. And, and here's what I, I would do. I would sit down, and I would read through this list. And it all comes from Scripture. The first one says, who am I in Christ? Who I am in Christ, it, and the first part of it, I'm accepted in Christ. And so it says, I'm God's child, which comes from John 1, 12. I'm not going to read all the verses, but it's, he says, I'm God's child. The next one from John 15, 15, I am Christ's friend. And I would just read through this. I've been justified. I'm united with the Lord, and I'm one spirit with him. I've been bought with a price. I belong to God. I am a member of Christ's body. And I would go down this list. I'm a saint. Man, I didn't feel like a saint. Man, I felt lower than dirt. But a saint is someone who's been brought into God's family. It doesn't have anything to do with what you do. It's your identity. And then, you know, this one really got, I've been adopted as God's child. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. I'm complete in Christ. And then there's a section of I am secure. Why? Because I'm free from condemnation. Man, I needed that one. Man, I would condemn myself so much. If I blew it, and I blew it often, you know, guys, you know my story. I struggled with, with PTSD, which caused anger and other issues. And, man, I would lose it with the family, and I would just so condemn myself. I'd go apologize, and, and I just want to change so badly. And it was through medication, okay? Medication is not a bad thing. I want you to hear that. Because there was wires crossed that medication could help. The moment I got on the depression, or it was actually anxiety medicine for general anxiety disorder, the moment I got on that, there was a tremendous change. You know how you know when medicine works? When it does that. And I went, oh, there must be something crossed up here. I was on that for 10 years. During that 10 years, I went to counseling, and I began reading this. Do I still struggle with low self-esteem and self-worth issues? Sure I do. When things happen, I have to stop. But you know, I read this so much, and I went over that list so much, that, man, it began to rewire my brain. And now I don't go to the depths. You know, I might drop a little, and then, I, then, then it hits me. No, man, I'm God's child. Man, I'm a child of the king. Man, he loves me. He hasn't condemned me. If I'm guilty of something, I need to confess it to him and to the person I hurt or whatever. I need to do that. But you know what? Then I'm free. And I'm that, you have to really mean it. You can't just go, oh, I'm sorry, and move on. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me for? And, you know, you really repent. You know what repentance is? Repent means that you change it's changing your mind it's changing directions so if you're always asking forgiveness for the same thing then maybe there's some wires crossed maybe a real transformation needs to take place in your heart and in your mind are you with me are you with is this helpful Maybe, maybe you're lacking confidence. You feel insecure. You feel inadequate. You feel like you're not enough. Anybody there? You say this, my confidence is in Christ, in Christ alone, because his spirit lives within me. I can do everything he calls me to do. You're going to write it, think it, confess it, and believe it. 
And you're going to do that over and over with whatever it is, that biggest stronghold. You see the power here? The power of God's word will transform your mind. Anybody battling with lustful thoughts? You don't have to raise your hand. Let God renew your mind. Let God renew your mind. You're going to say this over and over again. God has purified my mind. I will honor him with my eyes and my thoughts. My God is faithful. Even when I'm tempted, he always provides a way out. You're going to write it. You're going to think it. You're going to confess it, and you're going to believe it. How about food? Anybody struggle with food? Man, when I get stressed, you know where I go? Yeah, man. The fridge, yep. You go to the fridge. So what do you want to do? You declare, when I'm stressed, I'm going to turn to God and not to food. I come to you, Jesus, because that's what I need. In you, I need to find my strength and my comfort. How about worry? Anybody struggle with worry? You're going to write it? What are we going to do? Write it. Say it with me. Write it, think it, confess it, and believe it. What is it? I cast my cares on you, God, because you care for me. I'm going to cast my anxiety. I'm going to throw it on you. And I have your peace because you're dwelling in my heart and in my mind. And we're going to focus on that. So what's the stronghold that you're dealing with? And how do you need to make a list? Do you need to get this book? There's a couple lists in here, several lists. There's some other great books. You, you know, Winning the War of Your Mind. This isn't just a book to read. Man, there's a lot of work in this book to really get things out and really see how the way we think affects everything that we do. You know, last week we said, as a, you know, the Bible says, as a person thinks, so is he. Man, it is so true. So true. We've got to fix our minds on what God says and what God's truth is. And not on what we think. Man, I don't know about you, but I have some stinking thinking. And it's not godly thinking. And so we need God's mind in us to do that. So what truth is it that demolishes the stronghold that's in your life? Fix your mind, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, on what's excellent and praiseworthy. Fix your mind on those things. Take this verse, take that verse there in Philippians and write it down and begin thinking on those things and watch how God can transform. God's in the transforming business. I thank God that he's healed me. That I'm not the same man I was 10 years ago. And I thank God that hopefully I won't be the same man in 10 years that I am now. Because God's in the transforming business. I still got room to grow. I got, still got stuff in me that I need for God to transform. How about you? You got things in you that need transforming and changing renewing the way you think about things, the way you see yourself, the way you see others. You know, that's what's wrong with our world right now is we've, we as followers of Jesus Christ we got to view others as God views others created in his image. Why is there mass shootings? Why is there death and destruction happening all around us? Because the value of human life 
has been, we don't see it anymore. We as followers of Christ have to lift up each life, every person, regardless of what? Regardless of the color of their skin. Come on. God's got a beautiful brush that he paints people with. We're one race, right? And it's our stinking thinking that gets us messed up. How do we overcome the lies? Through the truth of Jesus Christ. You remember the verse? You remember the verse? It says, if you're following me, Jesus is saying, if you're following me, if you're, if you're one of my disciples, he says, here's the deal. If you're following after me, then the truth, what, will set you free. See, we take that verse kind of out of context, and we say, well, the truth will set us free. What truth? What truth? The law of gravity truth, you know? No, that just makes it harder for us that are getting older and bigger, right? Come on. Here's the deal. It's God's truth. When we're following Jesus' way, he says that the truth, who, who is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. He's the truth. And he will set you free. He will set you free from that worried mind that you're carrying around with you, that, that laid down mind that you're struggling with, that you're battling with, that war that is raging within you. He is able to set you free from it. But we have to engage with him. We can't be, that's why he says, don't conform to this world, but be transformed. What? By renewing your mind, putting God's word. You see, that's why Eastern med med meditation, it, it says clear your mind. What are you going to put in it? God says, don't clear your mind, replace the thoughts with my thoughts. Get a picture of who God sees you as. That will transform you. Get a picture of who God thinks others are. It will transform you. Get a picture of how much love he's got for you. Even when we, what? Even when we blow it, God loves us. So where are you at today? What stronghold is it? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning. We give ourselves to you. We give our mind and our wayward, worried, anxious thoughts to you, God. And we want to replace them with your thoughts. So God, whatever they are, maybe they're, they're hurtful thoughts, maybe they're suicidal thoughts, maybe they're thoughts of hurting others, or maybe they're thoughts of lust, and maybe they're thoughts, you know, whatever it is that we're struggling with, maybe it's self-worth thoughts, maybe it's negative thoughts that will never measure up, will never amount to anything. God, show us your truth, that who you say we are, and who we can become as we follow you. God, I pray for my friends here this morning, those online, God, that you would deliver us from that stinking thinking. Let us have your mind. Let us incorporate it into our life. Focus on you and where you're leading us. If you're here this morning and you want to make Jesus the central figure in your life, you want to make him the Lord, as the Bible says, the Lord of your life, the manager of your life, it's so easy. Would you just pray this prayer? Say, Jesus, I believe that you're God's son, that you died on that cross for my my missing your ideal for life, my sin. I need your forgiveness. And I believe that you died and that you rose again 
to secure my forgiveness. I ask you to come into my life and to fill my life this morning. Help me, God, to replace those negative thoughts with thoughts from you, those good, pure, worthy, excellent thoughts. God, I want to live my life for you today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You know, if you made that decision today, I'd love to know about it. We would love to celebrate with you because that's the greatest decision you can make, and it's the first biggest step to winning the battle in your mind because then he gives you the strength to overcome because he's already won the battle. Thank you. Let's sing together. Let's worship this God who is able to change even our minds.